You know, it might seem a little strange having a whole video dedicated to talking about the Windows calculator, and ordinarily you'd be right. But with Windows 7 comes something we all haven't seen for a long, long time. You know, ever since Windows came out, well, about from Windows 95 onwards, the Windows calculator has scarcely changed at all. But in Windows 7, however, the calculator has had a massive rewrite. For most of us, though, the calculator is just a calculator. It's a tool for adding and subtracting a couple of numbers. It's a tool for adding up the things that we want to buy, working out our finances, and your average typical basic math. For others, though, the calculator is a programmer's tool. It's a high school, college, and university math tool. But in Windows 7, the calculator is far from just a simple calculator. So from our Windows 7 desktop here, let's go and click on Start. We'll go to All Programs, Accessories, and right up the top you can launch the calculator. We could do it that way. Alternatively, we can simply click on Start and just type in Calc, which I find a lot easier, and hit Enter. And that's certainly much quicker. OK, well, here's the calculator, and it probably doesn't look that special, really. After all, to most people, again, it's just a calculator. The look of it has changed a little bit. It's also a little bit larger than the old calculator. But by and large, this view at least bears little difference from previous versions of the calculator. However, if we click on the View menu, you can see here that we've got a whole swag of different options at our disposal. Now, we've got the basic calculator that you see now, which is running in standard mode. We have a scientific calculator, something that those of you in high school and beyond doing math will most likely appreciate. Now, I remember I used to have one of those big HP scientific calculators, but now you will most likely have all the features you need right here with the Windows 7 calculator. Now, we've got a programmer's calculator as well. Let's take a look at that. That's useful for converting things like hex and binary and so forth. So if you ever wanted to know what 50 is in hex, well, we can type in 50 and then click the hex button, and there's your answer. You want to know what 50 is in binary? Well, we'll click bin, and there it is. Now, our other option up the top here, we have a statistics calculator as well. And in addition to these different modes, there's also a very useful array of options at the bottom here in the view menu. So I'm just going to set this back to our standard calculator here, and we can do that by either going through the menu as you saw or by hitting the keyboard combination of Alt plus the 1 key on our keyboard. Now you also note down here we've got this history option. Now I like this option actually since there's been many times in my life where I've entered in equations into the calculator. And then another equation, and then another, you know, like when you add up lists of numbers, and then you get to a point where you forgot if you added something or not. Well, this history feature takes the guesswork out. So let's activate it. We'll click on history. Let's just do some basic math. So let's just say 2 plus 2. Obviously, that equals 4. We'll say 3 plus 3. Again, that equals 6. 4 plus 4 and we'll say 5 plus 5. Now notice that each time we do any of these sums, it's being added to this history section here at the top of the window. So now we've got the ability to quickly check back and say, oh, hang on a sec, did I add up 3 plus 3? Well, I did, because there it is in the history. Now we can even click it and find out that the answer is 6. Now once you've got more and more items, and it expands beyond what's going to fit inside this list here. You can use these up and down arrow icons to cycle back and forth through the list. Now, if you want to copy this entire list here to the Windows clipboard, you can use the Edit menu and then select Copy History. And then you're able to paste this entire history here. Let's just open up, say, Windows Notepad, and we'll do a Control-V. And there you have our entire history from the calculator able to be imported into another application, such as Notepad, as you've seen, or perhaps even Excel. Now, also notice that on this same window here, that if we go back to our Edit menu and choose History, we've got the ability to edit the selected item in the History window. So let's select, say, our 4 plus 4 entry. We'll go to Edit, 
history and then choose edit or we could just hit F2 on our keyboard. Now this allows us to rename or edit if you like, if you prefer to use that sort of terminology, edit the values in the equation. So instead of 4 plus 4, let's say it's 14 plus 4 and you can see that our answer comes back immediately as 18. Now if you no longer want to see this history you can turn it off by going to the view menu and selecting history again and you can see that it's gone. Now even if we add a new equation let's say 50 times 50 which is 2500 let's go back and turn the history feature on again you'll note that it's not only continued to save our history but this time our new equation has also been added to the history list as well. Now if you do want to clear this history completely, turning it off doesn't clear it as you've just seen. So the way to clear it is to click the edit menu, we'll click history, and then we can choose clear or hit control shift and D on our keyboard. All right, well let's go and hide our history feature again. This time we'll use the keyboard shortcut of control and H. So that way it's not in the way and we'll go back up to our view menu and the next option we have here is this feature called digit grouping. You see let's not turn that on for the moment let's just go back to the calculator the way it normally is and let's enter in a large value let's say we'll enter in 1 million. In fact that's not 1 million let's try again there we go 1 million now I know it's a million it's 1 and 6 zeros but at a glance, of course, it can be challenging to accurately see those six zeros and comprehend that this actually is a million. Sometimes it takes a little while just to look at it and count those numbers. But if we go back to our view menu and turn on digit grouping, it now uses commas in the correct places. So I can easily identify that this value now is in fact one million. Now let's go back to our view menu. You'll notice we've got a couple of other options at the bottom here. The default calculator, as you see it now, is a standard calculator with the basic view. However, we do have the ability to perform unit conversions as well, and date calculations, as well as some worksheets for working out things like your mortgage payments, your car lease, and your fuel consumption. And these are really useful, as you'll soon see. So let's start with unit conversion. We'll select that and that'll expand out our calculator here and show us the types of units we can convert to and from. So from the top drop down box here, we can select the type of unit. So we've got things like angle, area, energy, length, power, and so forth. So let's pick one of these. Let's say volume. We'll pick volume. And let's say that we want to convert from, we'll say a US gallon and we'll enter in a value let's say we want to convert 10 US gallons and we'll convert that to a litre. Okay so the result is 37.8 so 10 US gallons is 37.8 litres so one US gallon for those people doing their math would be 3.78 litres that's a really cool feature and speaking of cool let's do another one let's use temperature so at the top of course we'll choose temperature let's convert a value in degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius and we'll convert 80 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius which comes out at almost 27 degrees which is probably going to be quite a nice day now I really like this feature is it makes doing these conversions really really simple and you don't have to go off to the web to try and find some software or sites that'll do them. Although admittedly Google itself does convert many of these but having them available right here in the Windows calculator is obviously a great feature. Now the next item we have in our view menu is a date calculation. Now have you ever tried doing this you want to calculate the difference between two dates for those of you who have kids how many times have they had you count out how many sleeps until their next birthday or how many days until Christmas or some other special event? Well, we can use the new Windows 7 calculator for that too. So we first need to select our from date and then our to date. Now our date picker here already defaults to today's date. So all we need to do is select the right hand picker here and let's scroll over to December 25th. We'll select that. 
Now we'll click the Calculate button. And there you go. There's 57 days until Christmas. So you'd better start working on those Santa letters. Now finally, if we go up to the View menu again, we'll select Worksheets. We've got options here for calculating mortgage payments, our car lease payments, and our fuel economy. So let's take a quick look at these as well. Let's go with our mortgage calculator first. From the drop-down box here, we can determine what sort of calculation we want, whether that's to calculate our down payment that we're going to need, our monthly payments, the purchase price, or the term of a mortgage. So let's choose the bottom one. We'll say term in years, and we'll need to enter in some details. So let's say our purchase price of a home is going to be $450,000. We'll put down a down payment or a deposit of, we'll say $50,000. And let's set the interest rate at an amount, we'll say 5%. And I'm willing to pay out, we'll say $2,500 a month. So if we click Calculate, down the bottom here, you can see it's going to take us 22 years roughly to pay off this mortgage. So let's see what happens if we make it $3,000 a month. We'll click Calculate. And that's been brought down to a much more manageable 16 years. So we're going to save six years of repayments if we can cough up an extra $500 a month. So that little mortgage calculator here, that might be useful for you guys. So let's move on. We'll take a look at the next one. We'll go to View, Worksheets. We'll choose a vehicle lease. Again, we've got options here that you expect to find when you're calculating your lease payments. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these again. We've done it before. We've already seen how it works. Just fill in all these details. Click Calculate, and you'll get the results. So the next one we have is for our fuel economy. And here we can work out just how thirsty our gas guzzling car is, either in miles per gallon or using litres per 100 kilometres. Now again, you can have some fun with these, or probably not really when you figure out how much money you're actually spending on fuel, but at least it will tell you how much fuel that you're approximately using, so you can use that as a justification to the boss when you squeeze him for a new car. So there you have it. In this video, we've talked about what's really been a largely silent update to Windows 7, the Windows Calculator. It's another one of those nice changes to Windows 7 that probably won't have you pulling out your wallet and rushing to upgrade, but when you start adding all these nice little touches together, it certainly makes Windows 7 seem like a must-have operating system. So we hope you've enjoyed this video on the Windows Calculator, and we'd like to thank you for watching.